I, I couldn't leave here without getting your official breakdown of the biggest fight mm. of this century. Mayweather mm. versus Pacquiao. Now, I, I'm sure you've probably given your take on this fight, you know, multiple times. Actually, I know you have because we've had you um, comment on it a couple times. But now that the fight is just a couple weeks away, you know, there's been some rumors about, you know, uh, sparring partners getting knocked out, leg cramps, all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Just just based on everything you've heard and, and us being roughly 10 days away, right. um, how do you think it's going to play out? Well, you know, uh, we have spoken about it. I think, Earl, you know, my position has always been one as a, a fan, not as a fan, I'm sorry, but as a coach. So I do tend to look at things in a different way because, you know, I, I do have athletes that if they can excel, could possibly, you know, get a fight with either one of these uh, gladiators. So, um, you know, watching uh, some of the footage on uh, All Access TV or what have you, whatever, whatever the new name is now, and you know, reading some of the articles and hearing some of the things that are coming out of the camp uh, camps, um, I do know that a bad camp doesn't mean a bad fight, and a great camp doesn't mean it's going to be a good fight. Mm -hmm. I think if I had to siphon it, you know, down uh, out of its tank some, somewhat into the recesses of my brain, um, I could see the fight going in four parts, you know, one through three, three through six, six through nine, and nine through twelve. Hmm. Um, in that manner and all the things that could possibly happen during that time. I think each fighter brings something to the table that the other one is going to have to figure out and adjust to. Um, on Pacquiao's behalf, of course, you know, we know that he's a volume fighter, that uh, he does have good footwork, uh, he's, he's quick. Um, I've always said he hasn't evolved into that mature fighter yet and what I mean by that is he still has that high energy style um, but it, it's benefiting some uh, most of the way that high energy style but when you start getting 36 and 37 you you know you do have to make adjustments in your style where you relax the style more you know when to push you know when to step off the gas and things like that so I can go all the way back to the Bradley first Bradley fight um, and also the um, uh, fight um, with, um, I want to say the last kid he fought, the Algeri fight, and not see that much change, that much difference. But going back to the Bradley fight, particularly the last four rounds, you know, Bradley was pretty effective mm -hmm. counter-punching uh, uh, Pacquiao. And, of course, Marquez always was effective counter-punching him. And I think now you're going up against the greatest counter-puncher uh, in boxing. Uh, not only uh, the greatest counter-puncher, but the greatest accurate counter-puncher. I mean, Floyd's connect percentage is the highest in boxing, and his connect against percentage is the highest in boxing. So you have to put that on the table first. Um, volume punching is supposed to be the advantage that um, Manny has, but without taking anything away from Manny uh, and his ability to volume punch, you have to have some unpredictability involved in that. I think you have to really have add some, you know, things to your arsenal, mm -hmm. add some things to your to your uh, game to sort of be able to disguise your strength and hide your strength and present your strength at the time, at the least time the other person is expecting it. 
Um, I think with Manny, what you see is what you get. And listen, he's great at it. He's a, he's a superstar at it. Mm -hmm. So that that's by no means taking anything away from him. The part that would concern me if I was the coach would be the mental part. Mm -hmm. the, the, the ability to keep the mental focus the whole time. Mm -hmm. We've all seen him slap his gloves together. We've all seen him get reckless at times where he's been hit with shots and big shots uh, from Barrera to Morales to Marquez and and um, we haven't seen him get off of that too much. Mm -hmm. uh, from Floyd's end, um, you know, I always thought it was really one more and I'm just going to say one, even though it wouldn't surprise me if it's several left. But that one great fight mm -hmm. was still any that a situation like this would bring out. And I think by his demeanor, his approach to this fight, um, his focus to this fight, I just have a feeling we're going to see this fight come out of him. I, I remember the thrill in Manila, you know, and Ali and Joe had been through some real tough battles. Right. And they were up there in age, and, and Joe Frazier in particular um, had shown decline. Mm -hmm. But it might have been his greatest heavyweight fight. Hmm. Um, at that time because of the factors that were involved. The, the dislike for Ali. Mm -hmm. uh, Ali desperately wanted to knock Joe Frazier out. All the elements came together. Right. And we saw this heavyweight fight that hasn't been duplicated since. <laughs> you know, I mean, mm -hmm. it, it was a fight. That, that fight <laughs> there is, was the fight. Mm -hmm. So, Getting back to Floyd, um, a guy who doesn't have much wear and tear on him, uh, who's very well preserved, who has kept his body the way he's supposed to keep it, his weight the way he's supposed to keep it, uh, no drinking, no any extracurricular activities that would send him on a physical decline. Um, and also the fact that this fight is now here and him deep down inside knowing that the public is not pulling for him. Mm -hmm. You know, it's funny, I watched the show the other, the presentation the other night and you just get the sense that, you know, it, the world wants Manny to win. Mm -hmm. And it's nothing wrong with that. I certainly don't have anything against Manny, you know, I'm speaking about two fighters and it's nothing personal. But I think that also fuels the other fighter. I think it gives him enough fuel that he could take his game to another level. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that, when you heighten a fighter's senses like Floyd, who's, again, who's just a processing fighter, he, you know, he doesn't have to think. He processes quick. And that keeps you a step ahead of the game. Um, and then you have this motivation, you know, because of the unknown, the, the unknown factors, the fact that he's been watching Manny over the last few years and Manny's been his adversary for the last several years and this is all he's ever heard every time he got a mic in his face after the fight. What about Pacquiao? What about Pacquiao? And it seemed one-sided to me when Pacquiao was finished. They you know, asked him about Floyd, but it was a different type of question and a different type of response. When it came to Floyd, it was always like, you ducking Pacquiao. When it came to Pacquiao with the microphone in his face, it's like, well, I'm willing to fight Floyd. And then, you know, you had the coach, coaches, uh, situation there with Floyd Sr. saying, you know, that he expects this to be a devastating fight. And you have Freddie Roach saying that, you know, Manny is not Floyd out 47-1. And, 
you got so many factors going on. Mm -hmm. um, I think it boils down to being um, that pinnacle moment, you know. Uh, all the pressure is on now. The pressure, mm -hmm. it's on. Uh, the week of the fight, who handles the pressure? Who's used to it? Who's Who's got the real motivation? Who's got the chip on his shoulder? It's obvious Mayweather's got the chip on his shoulder. It's quite obvious that he does. Um, is it on his shoulder any more than any other fight? I think so. I think so. Because this is the first fight that the public perceives as a fight that he could very well lose. Uh, in the past several years, no one has perceived any other opponent defeating him. They hoped that they could defeat him, mm -hmm. but they weren't so sure. I don't think it was one fight that he's had where the odds were against him. I think in this fight the odds are slightly against him or sort of even out a little bit. I haven't really looked at him, but you know, you hear things. And so um, these are all the intangibles that have presented itself fight night. And um, I think the first three rounds will determine who wins that fight. Not who's winning the rounds, but how the first three rounds go. One man could be behind because of less activity, uh, or he could be behind because he hasn't figured it out. Um, but my gut tells me that Floyd Mayweather could very well possibly stop Manny Pacquiao. Wow. Um, and the reason why I say that is, is because I believe Floyd hits harder than Juan Manuel Marquez. Mm -hmm. You know, that punch Marquez landed was a timing punch. You know, now you look at Manny when he hit Ricky Hatton, that punch right there, uh, the one that knocked him down first, uh, had got up and finished the round. You know, and Manny caught him with a nice boom, compact hook right on the money, right? Mm -hmm. And he got up and uh, he finished the round. Of course, the next round he knocked him out. So people say, well, he knocked him out in the second round. Well, it took Floyd nine rounds, I believe, or ten rounds, I believe. But my point is this. When Floyd did hit him, with a money punch. It was over right then and there. Mm -hmm. He didn't go back to his corner and come out for the second round. Right. You know, when he did Clippy, he could no longer defend himself anymore. Mm -hmm. As soon as the referee let him back in, <laughs> within 10 seconds, it was over. Yeah. Whereas Manny, boom, caught him on the money. Mm -hmm. He got up. Shaky, legs wobbling, and everything, but he made it out of the round. And he got back to his corner. So people have to look at that and say it's not when it happened, it's how it happened, you see. But in that case with Marquez, there's a, a saying that my grandfather used to say. He says, when, when Marquez caught him, Manny Pacquiao, he says, when you see the sawdust, the meal is not far away. So the mind remembers that. Mm. And if you start getting hit with these laser shots, bang, the mind computes that. It, it remembers that. It takes you right back there. You never recover from a shot like that. Mm. You will never recover from a shot like that. All you got to do, and I, and I hate to say it, is, is um, because um, it's just one of the saddest things to me is uh, one month, mm. you know. That first knockout, uh, he never recovered from it. And we can go on and on and on with guys like that. Mm -hmm. um, you just never recover from it, particularly at this age. If you're 20, you can build your defense around it. You know, you can you can make certain adjustments um, to you know, nullify this really happening. But as you get older, you, you can't build that wall around it like you can, like a, maybe a Vladimir Klitschko, you know, when he was in his early 20s. And, mm -hmm. and you know, he's prevented this from happening ever since. Um, 
it, it's a tough thing to come by. And I think that Mayweather Camp knows that. And I think that they will be looking to bounce one off his chin. I mean, Manny admitted that Timothy hurt him with the right hand in their last fight. And it was a good shot. But it wasn't a Floyd Mayweather right hand. Right. You know, Manny was actually pulling away from that right hand that Bradley hit him with. Hmm. One wonders if he'd have been walking in what that right hand would have done to him. But it shook him bad. So that's to let the public know that that element is still there, that it still exists. So to me, that's what I can say is the determining factor in victory for Floyd Mayweather. If he hurts Pacquiao, um, I don't think he'll let him off the hook. Hmm. And then the size difference does mean something when you fight Floyd Mayweather. It doesn't mean, you know, it doesn't mean much in some cases, but when you fight a Floyd Mayweather, it means a lot, uh, particularly if he doesn't have to be weight-drained and anything like that. And what people have to really remember, Floyd is a strong kid. He's always at that weight, mm -hmm. you see. When you don't have to chop off 20 and 25 pounds, when you don't have to dry out, when you don't have to do a lot of things that cause fighters problems during training camps and you can just go right into your training, it gives you a huge advantage. And he just fought a good 12-round fight in uh, uh, December, I believe it was, of last year, October, whatever it was. So mm -hmm. I think his mechanics are still in line. But anything can happen in a fight. And um, this is by no means uh, put down to Manny Pacquiao or Freddie Roach. No means. It's, it's just a personal opinion. Um, and anybody could be wrong. You know, I am posed a question, so I answer it to the best of my ability, right. not pretending to say this is the way it's going to go. All I'm saying is I could very well see it going this way. Hmm. But, of course, it's boxing, and one punch can change the direction of a lot of thoughts and a lot of intentions. So, um... But I, you're Ben, and I have to give you something, so, <laughs> I, you know, I, I have to come up with something, and that's the analogy that I've come up with um, to, you know, our favorite Floyd Mayweather and the fight, um, but at the same time, there's no disrespect to Freddie Roach or Manny Pacquiao. I mean, Pacquiao has proven that he's a super fighter, mm -hmm. a fighter that I admire, um, and his story, of course. Um, his big heart, you know, his giving heart that he has for his people, his love for his people, and his, you know, it's, it's, I've never met him, but he seems to be very approachable, and, you know, very warm-hearted person. So it's nothing personal; it just boils down to those that four square, that those four ring posts that night. That's all. So you know, good luck to both of them, and you know, I was glad that the world gets to see this fight. And, and, you know, I think they should support the fighters uh, because you never know when you're going to have a clash like this again between two proven superstars, particularly in the last 10 years. So it's a treat for the world. And, um, you know, both fighters deserve to, you know, walk out in the sunset with a payday of that magnitude. And it's a, it's May 2nd is going to be a day that the world slows up or might almost come to a stop. Mm. Not just certain countries, but the world. Wow. So just to have boxing shut the world down a little bit like that makes me proud to be uh, part of the sport and uh, involved in the sport and uh, continue to promote the sport, be an ambassador to sport and say, hey, you know what, it's the greatest sport in the world. It's uh, man against man and the mentality that it takes for these gladiators to climb between those ropes and perform and knowing the public does sees a boxing match, but you know, their life is on the line. And to put your life on the line year after year, fight after fight, you know, boxing is the ultimate sport. And to have these two men on uh, May 2nd um, shut the world down with their ability and their uh, skill 
and let the world see what they've been wanting to see. I think it's a testament to the work of a lot of people. And, you know, I'm proud to uh, have said that, you know, I live to witness this and um, proud of both men.